tarot scope, like I said, we're going to be on <laughs> for a little while because we're going to do the whole week because I will not be on here Friday morning. However, I will be on Thursday morning because I have a fun and exciting gift for you for Thanksgiving because I am so grateful to each and every one of you who follow my channel, who support my lives, who are my students, my clients, all that stuff. So Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, put it on your calendar, I will be on and for one hour only, one hour only, my tarot apprenticeship, the self-paced module, will be on sale for 50% off. It hasn't been that low <laughs> since I built it, okay? Since I did the whole tarot tester thing and built it. So, yeah, Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for one hour only, my tarot apprenticeship will be on sale for 50% off. And just to give you a little heads up since you're here right now, the coupon code is TURKEY. So if you can't get on the live, you can at least go grab it and get the 50% off in that hour, okay? So it's gonna it's gonna be a, you know, come one, come all for the hour, okay? Just letting y'all know. All right, so anyways, what we're gonna do here, like I said, is we're gonna look at the entire week to find out what's coming up for us. Let's look at the energy and see how Thanksgiving week is gonna be. You know, the reason why we do this is because we wanna see what's coming up so we can utilize this energy. Is there problematic problematic energy coming up? Okay, we'll handle it. Is there a really good energy coming up? Awesome, we're gonna boost it, we're gonna use it, okay? First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna boost our heart chakra with the singing bowl. Then we're gonna do the fairy blessing, find out what our fairy blessing is. Y'all are gonna pick the deck that I use and then we're gonna get started with the reading, okay? So, whoop, here we go. All you're going to do as the bowl is singing, this is attuned to the frequency of the heart chakra. All you're gonna do is just breathe and listen to it sing, okay? You don't have to do anything, just relax. Take a few seconds to yourself, all right? Here we go. Now let's collectively take one super deep breath in. Fill up your lungs, expand your rib cage, pick up all the heaviness, and then blow it out quickly. That is an excellent breath work exercise that you can do at any time. If you're ever feeling anxiety or fear or anything negative, pick it up in the chest and blow it out, okay? So let's get our fairy blessing. And then, like I said, y'all are gonna pick the tarot deck that I use. And we're gonna we're gonna get all the juicy details. Oh yeah, happy Mercury retrograde. Thank you for the reminder. I was gonna mention that, and then I got on and started talking about the cruise and everything and totally forgot. <laughs> you know, I was telling everybody, Jamie, is that um on the cruise, we leave on the first, which is the new moon. And then by the end of the second cruise, we get back on the 15th, and that's the full moon. I thought that was pretty freaking neat. So, I set my water next to my phone while you did. Oh, perfect. Great idea. And if y'all don't know, in the tribe, there is a, um, not a meditation, but it's in the meditation tracks. But there is one that uh, you can play and sit your water in front of it, and it will program your water. So if you haven't seen that in the tribe, go look for it. It works. I know, right, Jamie? It's crazy. Okay, focus on the fairy blessing deck, and let's find out what our blessing is for this week. Again, we're gonna do the whole week. Let's see, what is our fairy blessing for this week? Focus on the deck. What is our fairy blessing for this week? A blessing of a safe place in the world. Ooh, look at that, number 44. You guys, I don't think we've ever gotten this card. I'm showing Instagram and TikTok, if y'all are wondering. I'm on both. 
A blessing of a safe place in the world, number 44. I love it. And what is 44? Four is magnified. So four represents security and stability, okay? It represents all the things that you've been doing, looking at what is. It's kind of like the reality of numerology, okay? So it's doubled. So that's telling you that there is this, even though we're going through Mercury retrograde, there is going to be this sense of stability and security throughout the week, okay? That makes me feel good. <laughs> let me read it to you, though. Let me... Let me look it up in the book, and I like to read these to you. I love these cards. I've had these cards for years, and I don't think I've ever pulled that one. Okay, here's what it says. It's kind of dark in here, so I'll, I might stumble a little bit. Uh, the fairy gift of a sanctuary, a space in which to feel completely supported and loved. Mm. The fairies know what it's like to find the safe place in the world. For theirs are under siege and have been for such a long time. The fairies know how to find the little home in the forest or the garden that is growing wild, the roots of old trees and the hollows beneath the sacred hills. In these places, they have grown stronger and stayed safe, and they now transfer to you a part of this gift. You will now find places and spaces within the world where you will feel free to be completely yourself where you too can grow strong and bright again and need not have fear. Uh, let there be a shelter and a sanctuary for you and your soul, where you can learn what it is that you are meant to do next, and where there is no harsh word spoken, only guidance that can help ease us all into the next stage of our lives. Let the safe space become our homes and our workplaces, our friendships and our schools. Let the world become a safer place, I'm sorry, a safer space, and let the natural world shelter you with uh, her turnings and showings of the changes about you. Make not a fortress of this place you find, but let it begin to grow in your heart so that whenever you go, others feel safe with you and the world changes in small but bright and beautiful ways, all as a result of this blessing of the fairies. Isn't that cool? So it's telling you that you can experience this safe space. But it's telling you, like I said, don't make a fortress out of it. What does it mean? Don't be the hermit and like close yourself off from the world because you've created this bubble of false security. Okay? You have the ability to create or experience safe spaces in your everyday life. Does that make sense? So boundaries are needed, but not brick walls. Got it? I have a piece of hair tickle on my nose. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> excuse me. Let's pick the tarot deck that we're going to use. Again, we're going to use this for the entire week. And we're going to reveal what's coming up over the whole entire Thanksgiving holiday week. Okay? The reason why we do this is because you want to be able to understand how the energy is going to be feeling and what you might experience, and that way you get ahead of everybody else and everything else, and you can handle situations that, let's say you have maybe a toxic family, and you see that there might be an uh, energy of combativeness. Well, okay, you know this, so now you go into the situation in your power and your sovereignty, and you're not ready to fight. You're ready to set that boundary, okay? All right, deck number one, everybody's fave, the Light Seer's Tarot, or... Deck number two, my new Christmas deck. <laughs> one or two. Please vote in the comments, but only vote one time, please. That way we can keep track, and you all help me keep track of uh, which one's going to win. So deck one or deck two. Oh, twos are getting it on TikTok. Camera one, camera two. <laughs> this one better or this one better? <laughs> Okay, it's a little bit mixed on Instagram. TikTok's loving the twos, y'all. I like it. One or two. Thank you, Tanya. I see your comment, even though it hit it. All right, it looks like twos have it, y'all. So, darn, my Christmas deck is going to get used. If y'all don't know, I'm a bit of a Christmas freak. <laughs> Uh, 
I love Christmas. Look how thick this book is. Golly. It's a, it's a really nice deck. They did a great job with it. And by the way, for the weeks that I'm gone, you guys, I have um, your weekly tarot scopes already recorded and they will um, they will post on YouTube on the days, okay? So next Monday at, I think it's 9 a.m. I have it to set or I have it set to post. And, and then the next following Monday, the next one will post for you, okay? That way, I got you covered, okay? I would not leave you without guidance. <laughs> Do I watch the Hallmark Christmas movies? Uh, not usually, but lately, yeah. <laughs> my, I remember whenever I was still married, um, we would go to my mother-in-law's house and she would all, I mean, she would leave Hallmark on the entire time, morning, noon, and night. It was always on the Hallmark channel. And, uh, so that's like a, a memory of those holidays, which were good. They were good memories. For the most part. All right, let's see. I'm just making sure I got them all shuffled up for you, which I'm not doing a very good job, but it's all right. Okay, <laughs> excuse me. Let's see. Focus on the deck. Ask the deck, what messages do we need to know this week? You can ask the deck, what is the energy of each day this week? Whatever you choose. Let's see. Yeah, usually I have all the Christmas movies and I watch them. I already started watching them like a long time ago. <laughs> but I, you know, I do that because it brings me joy. It brings me joy and I do what brings me joy and I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. So there's that. Okay, so let's look at what's coming up for us today. Today... We have the moon in reverse, okay? So when the moon is in reverse, it can indicate there is a, a sense of being, well, I mean, God, we do have Mercury going retrograde today. So there might be some emotions that pop up. There might be some things revealed today, okay? Uh, that need to be revised, revisited, re restructured, whatever it is for you, okay? Because this is gonna be something that, with it being a major arcana, that means this is a big theme in your life. So think of like the major arcana as like the chapters of a book. The minor arcana are the in-between pages, okay? The details of the chapter. So this chapter, starting off the week, is we have Mercury going retrograde, we have the moon in reverse. So again, you know, the moon is what is hidden, but we all know that what is hidden will always come to light, right? Right? So when the moon is in reverse, it's indicating that something has come to light. Something, there's some sort of revelation. There's some sort of thing coming to fruition. There, It could be emotions coming up. It could be anything. This is a collective reading. So for you, it, it could be that Mercury retrograde is kicking into gear and all of a sudden these old memories, like I just shared with you all, an old memory of Christmas. Um, just things are popping up for you to revisit, okay? Not to stay there, just to revisit, review, revise, okay? For Tuesday, we have the Queen of Candles, which is the Queen of Wands in reverse. Now, you know what's interesting? She showed up in reverse in one of the other readings for like the next week or the week after, okay? So there is an energy of maybe being a little bit exhausted, maybe being a bit overwhelmed. When the Queen of Wands is in reverse, she's not feeling on top of her game. She is sometimes a little insecure, sometimes a little fearful. And so what she tries to do, she tries to control the situation. Maybe she tries to do everything and she winds up wearing herself out. Okay. So on Tuesday, just understand that there might be a need for you to, to rest, to step back, step back, take a pause. Maybe you need to delegate some things. Maybe you need to, uh, take a nap. <laughs> okay. And it's just telling you to be aware of where you are energetically. Sorry, this was poking my... Where you are energetically 
And maybe you need to, again, delegate. Maybe you need to take a nap. Maybe you need to just go back to center. There's so many things where you need to connect back to your energy, back to your sovereignty, back to center, okay? So you have the opportunity to turn this direct, right? All right, let's look at Wednesday. Wednesday, we have death in reverse. Golly, it's going to be a big week. <laughs> so when death is in reverse, it indicates that whatever ending you have experienced, whether it be in the past or this week, is telling you that now you're going to start seeing movement happen. You're going through the transition. However, also, when death is in reverse, it can indicate that maybe something was revealed here. It's bothering you here, and there could be resistance here. Okay, see how it all flows together? So, you have to decide, are you going to allow yourself to go through this metamorphosis, to go through this transition, or are you going to resist and suffer? Does that make sense? Now, it doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be all these negative things, right? Death means one door closes so another can open. But the thing is, are you, do you have your foot shoved in the door that's trying to close? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> look at the rest of your year past, right? Because we're in Mercury retrograde. Look at the year past and decide, you know, how, how, how did my year go? Am I in the same place that I was last year? Am I making progress in accordance to my goals? Like, what am I doing here? And if you're not, then it's time to really reevaluate all of that and start setting new uh, intentions, especially on, on Sunday, uh, setting new goals, revising everything, figuring out, okay, where did I get hung up? Where was I resisting? Where did I kind of fall short? Like let myself get sucked back into the mundane. You can ask yourself all these questions without shaming yourself. No need to shame yourself, okay? You want to have personal awareness because when you have awareness, that means you are allowed to call yourself out and you're not going to feel the shame. You're like, okay, okay, I see what I did here, but now I'm going to alter course. Now I'm going to fix this. And then you start making changes, okay? There's no need to shame yourself. So let's keep going. Let's look at Thursday. Ooh, Thursday, we have the Hierophant. Interesting. On Thanksgiving, we have the Hierophant. All these major arcana. Coincidence? No. Okay? So the Hierophant is all about your commitment. It is about an initiation. So what does the Hierophant want you to do? The Hierophant wants you to express and practice gratitude. Because this is showing up on Thanksgiving Day. Okay? Thanksgiving Day, well now, is about giving gratitude for everything that you have in your life. Positive or negative. Remember how we talked about... Um, when you get to a certain place of alignment, you have the ability to look back and give gratitude to the toxic people of your life because they pushed you into this new way of being. Kind of like the, the toxic relationships. You know how you break up with somebody and you're so just like thrown into this world of just scattered energy and everything and then you wind up going through a glow up? Yeah, that was, that was on purpose. Okay. The Hierophant is about learning how to give gratitude, learning how to be in alignment, be in alignment with the universe, how to use these laws and, and practices to get you to where you want to be, okay? The, the Hierophant wants to teach you all these things, and the first thing is gratitude, okay? You have to be able to give gratitude for so many things in your life, big or small. Don't only give gratitude when something amazing happens. Give gratitude every day, okay? And I even, y'all, some of y'all know this, but some of y'all are new. I even give gratitude to my candles for doing their job, for bringing light to the world, for keeping negative, negative energy away. Like, give gratitude to everything. <laughs> everything is energy, right? Give gratitude to your water. Give gratitude to your coffee. Whatever it is that you're doing, speak it into the coffee is like, I'm grateful. There you go. And then you drink it. All right. So let me move these kind of up here so I have more space. All right. Let's look at Friday. 
Friday, we have the list in reverse. Another major arcana, okay? So, this is judgment, okay, in the, in the traditional tarot. When this is in reverse, it can indicate that there is some sort of wake-up call that you're not getting, right? There is some sort of resistance here. Again, we have death in reverse. We have the moon in reverse. There's lots of resistance, right? So what judgment in reverse would, would, would like for you to do is look back, you know, review, since we're in Mercury retrograde, review where you have missed the call, where you have missed the lesson, where you are resisting surrendering to the universe, okay? So there might be some sort of wake-up call or resistance to change on Friday, and again, it takes personal awareness. You know, we have retrograde. So many of these are in reverse because we have to review them. We have to understand how it's affecting our lives. Judgment is not just about making a judgment about somebody. It is about, it's, it's are you hearing that, that, that wake-up call? Are you hearing the urgency of you ascending to your, your, uh, higher vibration to your awareness, whatever you want to call it, okay? That's like calling everybody to wake up. You going through an awakening but resisting because things might have to change in your life. I mean, you can choose not to, but I mean, it's going to suck. I'm <laughs> just being honest. You know, things like uh, awakening, spirituality, uh, divination, which is tarot and runes and oracle, uh, astrology, numerology, all of those things, you guys, are becoming mainstream, right? And you're going to see, obviously, a lot of um, fakes, I guess you can say, or uh, scammers, but the, the spiritual practices are going to become mainstream, right? Right? So if you if you miss if you resist this it's kind of like missing the train. You're going to miss the train to where we are going next. If you resist this awakening, if you resist this movement, if you resist this opportunity to to go into this new way of being. Okay? You can decide, no, I don't want to get on the train. Or you can decide, yes, I'm getting first class getting on the train right now, okay? I want to sit at the front. <laughs> so when judgment is a reverse, it's, it's this, the decision like you, you've missed some things, but what do you want to do about that? Do you want to continue ignoring it or do you want to step in and, and like go with the rest of us, okay? Sagittarius is exploration. Retrograde is asking to self-explore. Yes, I love that. Yes, and the retrograde does end on the 15th. We've been in the shadow period for a couple or so weeks, and then we will be in the shadow period for a couple or so weeks after, okay? That just means that, you know, retro Mercury goes in this, uh, like, orbit, you know? And so when it's going retrograde, it just means it's further away from the Earth than usual. So it kind of goes like that, right? Like an oval. And uh, so it's not literally going backwards. It's just pulling itself back. So we can revise, revisit, and recalibrate. But it's also wanting you to know, watch your, watch your communication. Because Mercury rules communication and electronics, right? So be aware that electronics might be glitchy. Communication is going to be glitchy. <laughs> um, that's why it's like, okay, bite your tongue. Set a clear boundary. Think before you speak. All that stuff, okay? All right, so let's look at Saturday. Saturday, we have the Queen of Gifts in reverse. Golly. So when the Queen of Gifts is in reverse, this is the Queen of Pentacles, okay? She is forgetting about herself, okay? Watch your spending on this day. If you do, uh, you know, like Black Friday stuff, if you do um, Christmas shopping on this day, watch your spending. Spend money on things that you know are going to be useful, not just shit. Okay. But also make sure that you're taking the opportunity to rest, to nurture yourself because these two feminine energies are in reverse. It could also indicate that 
one of these two days, you are having to encounter a negative feminine energy. What are you going to do? You're going to set boundaries. You're going to distance yourself from that person and you don't have to deal with their negativity. Does that make sense? Doesn't matter if they're family. Doesn't matter who they are. You do not have to deal with other people's toxicity. All right? You don't have to play a part in that. You can set a boundary and be like, you know what? I, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't want to participate in this. I'm going to exit. Okay? The boundary is for you, not for them. Okay? Oh, yeah, this month has not been the easiest. We have a lot of, a lot of planetary movements. <laughs> okay, so let's look at Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sunday is the new moon in Sagittarius. We have the three of good cheer. So this is the three of cups in reverse. Golly, man. Y'all saw me shuffle these, right? <laughs> now, when the three of cups is in reverse, for me... <laughs> indicating like there might be some delays getting on the cruise or it's telling you like don't overdo the drinky drinkies on the cruise but also you know when the three of cups is in reverse or the three of cups in general when it's direct it, in, it indicates um the the three phases of womanhood okay i don't know why i can't think it's like the the maid the mother and the crone thank you see just dropped right in my head so anyways, this is about support. This is about coming together to, to celebrate abundance, coming together to celebrate good times. So this could indicate that there might be delays. There might be changes in, in the plans. You might have to reschedule. Uh, we do have Mercury retrograde. So if you're like trying to go meet up, well, thank you, Jamie. It dropped in right before you said. <laughs> uh, if you're trying to go meet up with friends, there might be some sort of like delay. There might be an issue here or... You know, there might be a situation where people are wanting to get together and go have drinks or go gossip. And you might be like, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to do that. And that's your boundary. And you don't have to. Okay? So this is on Sunday, right? So Sunday is also the new moon in Sagittarius. Well, we do have Mercury retrograde, right? So think about all of the things that didn't go the way you had hoped this year and think about how you would like to revise them. This is not about, oh, I want so-and-so to change their mind about me. I want so-and-so to be in love with me. We don't try to overtake somebody else's free will. This is about you, okay? You cannot control anybody, anybody but yourself, all right? So let's not get there. Let's not go with that. Like I see so many accounts on social media that have, I mean, hundreds of thousands of followers. And it's all because they scam you into saying that they can do love spells to get somebody back or they make fake videos of, oh, you're going to get, this person's returning to you and they're going to love you forever. But it's bullshit. Okay. So please don't fall into that trap, right? Your journey is about you. You cannot control another person. Okay. So it's asking you, what would you like to revise and experience over the next year or six months, whatever, okay? Set those new intentions that are revisions of what you set earlier. Got it? Is this making sense? Yeah, we have the magus in reverse. We have the magician. Scattered energy going on here, okay? That's what's hiding underneath. That's the underlying current to probably why these cards are in reverse, right? Because when the magician is in reverse, it indicates that there's not enough focused energy. There's not enough know-how of how to focus the energy, how to manifest the things that you want. When the energy is scattered, manifestation gets scattered, right? You start experiencing things that you really don't want, that are unnecessary or that are toxic, okay? But you can turn that magician direct. You can focus your energy. You can manifest the things that you want and the hierophant wants you to focus that energy the hierophant wants to teach you how to do that and the first step is going to be gratitude okay is this making sense are y'all getting it let me get a drink good Good, good, good. I'm glad it's resonating. 
Because, the, you know, the tarot is meant to essentially call you out. <laughs> the tarot is wanting to reveal what is so you can handle the situation, okay? It's not meant to disempower you. It is actually meant to empower you. And you're going to learn that as we go through the Quantum Master Academy, okay? This game you love spells feel like any anytime someone tries to bring back someone from the dead, right? It's dark, takes their will, and makes something ugly. Totally true, Stephanie. I love that. Yeah, that's a great uh, analogy. Yeah. It is, it is something that backfires like a mother. <laughs> even my, um, even my friend Jenny, I was talking to her the other day. Um, I went to her house because she and her husband were having to put their dog down because he's, he's old and he was like in so much pain and everything. And so I went to go spend time with them and be with them the day before or the night before they had to do it. And <laughs> we were talking about, um, losing animals and everything. And she had a cat named Lynx. And when Lynx had gotten out, she was freaking out. And she, she goes, I even did things to bring him back. And she goes, and she goes, and I did get him back, but then he left again. She goes, I don't think I was supposed to bring him back. And I was like, that's such great awareness, you know, because when we love something, we, we want to control the thing. We want to, we want to always have it with us. You know, that's why it's so hard when we have to decide to put our animals down, even though we know it's best for them because they're in pain and they're at the end of their life. Um, but we want to keep them around selfishly, right? Because it makes us feel good. We don't want to lose that connection. But in reality, we never lose the connection. It's just the body dies off, you know? So it was very interesting how she had that awareness. I thought it was such a great example. She goes, I don't think he, I was supposed to bring him back. He, he needed to leave. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, poor doggy, but not poor doggy. He was such a good boy. He's such a sweet baby. And um, he, was, he was an old man. He was ready to go. So, yeah. I cried my ass off after I left their house. <laughs> I did. I scared my oldest son. He goes, I came inside and I was like in tears. And, and I, every time I come home, I always like go into their rooms just to like, let them know I'm home and to talk to them. And he looks at me and I'm just like, and he's like, what's wrong? He's like, what happened? Cause I guess I didn't tell him what was going on. He was probably at work or whatever. And, uh, and it took me a few seconds to be able to get it out. And he's like, oh my God. He goes, I thought somebody was like being mean to you or hurt you. He's like, I was ready to like go whoop some ass. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm just sad. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Let's see what else we need to know this week. A lot of major arcana, you guys. It's a big week. Oh, we got hostilities. There it is. Okay. So that's uh, that's a lot why the, the cards are in reverse because there is this, this tense energy going on. Now, this could be a collective energy that's uh, affecting you. It doesn't mean that you're hostile. It doesn't mean that you're always going to deal with hostile people throughout the week. It's just like a collective energy that could be affecting you, right? So understand when Mercury's in retrograde, people are going to say the wrong shit. People are going to say things that maybe trigger you. There's going to, the, the communication is wonky. You need to understand this, okay? So instead of getting hostile about it, instead of getting defensive about it, recognize it for what it is. And then you can even ask the person, like, did you, did you mean to say it like that? Because this, this is what I understood. Maybe I'm understanding wrong. Or you can be like, you know what? I'm not even going to participate in this conversation because it's not worth it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to fight with you. But also people are stressed out because they let the holiday stress them out. You don't have to do that, okay? If it's stressing you out, then there's something wrong, okay? You're putting too much emphasis on the wrong parts of the holiday, okay? Yeah, that's why we're being asked to be more self-aware, ask clarifying questions. Yeah, clarifying questions are key because either it's going to help the situation or it's going to reveal that that person had some ill intent, <laughs> okay like did you mean to say it like that because this is what I heard you know and if you know the person's being like ultra petty or whatever but like did you mean to say that like did you mean to say that out loud <laughs> or you'd be like wow 
That's a thing to say. <laughs> that's, you know, that's if you have the strength to counteract the pettiness without getting sucked into the toxicity. <laughs> Stick with me. I'll teach you some things. <laughs> oh, goodness. But, the, you know, the thing is, when we have, when we have Mercury in retrograde in Sagittarius, Sagittarius rules travel. So there's going to be a lot of people, you know, traveling over the holidays and whatnot. There's going to be delays. There's going to be frustrations. There's going to be all of that stuff. Okay. So just relax. Okay. If you have a delay, just know that the universe is trying to coordinate everything for you. So be patient, right? If people are upset, just understand that they are frustrated. They don't understand Mercury retrograde. You know, they just don't get it. And so give them grace. Okay. And you can give them grace. You can set boundaries and do all the things that you need to do without letting yourself be negatively affected. Does that make sense? You know, just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, I feel, I feel for them, you know? Oh, there's something wrong, all right. Walking into a den of it this week on my end. Oh, yes, you will be okay. You're, you're a strong gal. <laughs> I don't care. I'm sorry you missed a lot, but that's okay. It'll be on YouTube. Oh, please don't mess with me. Whatever. <laughs> You're the one that decided to go on a big boat with us, so. All right, focus on the deck. Ask it, what other messages do we need to know this week? What other messages do we need to know this week? Let's see, let's see. We have unexpected visitors, but it's in reverse. Okay, interesting. I don't know if we've gotten this card ever. We're getting a lot of new cards, that's nice. Okay, so 41. Okay, when this card is in reverse, unpleasant news is only unpleasant when you resist accepting what is. Ooh. Did we not talk about this already? Hmm. Sometimes the thing most desired is kept away from you because it's not for the highest good of you or others. Sometimes there is loss or disappointment due to a destiny whose pattern can't be understood yet. Change is something that may be forced upon you like bad weather that threatens a boat. <laughs> Domingo's gonna get scared now. Adapt to the shift in conditions and think how beautiful the sky will be afterward. Accept what is, and a more fulfilling path will soon be revealed. Remember that if you expect the unexpected, nothing can come as a shock. That's the thing. If you allow yourself to expect the unexpected, it really is a freeing place to be. Okay? Because think about the blessing of, uh, it says the blessing of a safe place in the world, right? When you create your own safe place, when you expect the unexpected and you don't assume it's going to be negative, then you flow much more easily with the universe, okay? You flow much more easily with the, the energy that is kind of like trying to guide you into the proper direction for you. Does that make sense? So even like... Again, we're in Mercury retrograde. There's a lot of energy for things to be kind of kind of wonky. And so it's telling you, expect the unexpected and you're not going to be shocked. You know, expect that good things can happen. Expect that whatever is going to happen, you're going to handle it. Doesn't matter. Okay? You're strong. You're knowledgeable. You have you have the ability to go through these things with grace and ease if you know that anything can change at any moment in time. Okay? Yeah, redirection, Tanya. I don't know why it keeps hiding your comments. Hang on, let me fix that for you. There we go. Okay. Do we dare? <laughs> yes, we do. You like the way I put that? Oh, good. I'm glad. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right. What else do we need to know? 
What else do we need? Focus on the deck. What else do we need to know? Let's see, let's see. Ah, oh, we got courthouse. Isn't that interesting? How we have the Hierophant and we have courthouse. These are very, very strong energies for doing what is necessary. Now the courthouse can indicate that somebody comes in and helps you, okay? Somebody comes in and guides you through certain situations that you might need help with, okay? So this could be like literally a, a, an attorney or, or somebody that you feel has the knowledge to get you to where you want to go. So for example, let's say you wanna build your finances, you know, you wanna invest. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go talk to a very successful financial advisor. You're not gonna to talk to someone or get help from someone who's broke, right? We don't do that. <laughs> so you have the opportunity to get help from somebody this week, okay? That could be anybody. It's all gonna be different because this is a collective reading. You could be the one that helps somebody. Don't forget that. If you have the opportunity to help somebody and it's not going to be at a great detriment to you, you know, if you have the ability to do so, please do so. Okay? Because that's good karma. It comes back to you tenfold. It's just, it's pleasing to the heart and to the soul. So help somebody if you can. Okay? But if you need help, don't be afraid to ask for help. But also... If you're asking for help, don't expect a handout. Expect guidance. Do you hear me on that? Do not expect a handout. Ask for guidance so you can learn how to do it yourself. Okay? That way you don't have to expect somebody else to do things for you. Because when you, when you ask for a handout, when you expect a handout, you are putting yourself in a very low vibration. Okay, you're putting yourself in a very weak position and you're not weak. When you ask for guidance, you are looking to grow. You are looking to expand. Got it? And you're looking to take control of your own destiny to get you to where you want to go. Does that make sense? What are you doing at the courthouse? <laughs> I, not me. Screw that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the, the courthouse, you know, it could be about commitment. It could be about, again, you need help with something. So, uh, also, mind your driving this week. You don't want to wind up at the courthouse. <laughs> so true. Doing so many weddings on my, uh, doing so many weddings on my wedding day, I knew it wasn't going to be perfect. Things will happen. It did, and I was cool with it. Didn't bother me. Yeah. AC broke, and I handled it like a champ. I love that. <laughs> yeah. If you're getting married during a re Mercury retrograde, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Like, please don't. When you plan your wedding date, if you ever plan to get married, if you're planning your wedding date, look ahead. Make sure Mercury is not retrograde because you do not, you do not want to sign any major contracts Buy any major electronics. Don't buy a car during Mercury Retrograde because communication is off. Okay? <laughs> Anne's like, I ain't ever getting married again. Okay, what else? What else? Let's do this one. You know, I always say that you know, if you have delays in travel, if plans get changed or something like that, I always say, oh, it's just part of the adventure. You know, it is what it is. Okay. Sometimes it's a bummer, but whenever you realize that things happen in the order that they need to, you like, you, you stop worrying about shit. Okay. Whatever. It is what it is. The universe has a bigger plan for me. So cool. I need to look at my past dates. Oh, I know. Me too. I'm pretty sure that when I got married both times, same guy. I, I learned the hard way, or I used to. I uh, married the same guy twice. They were probably both like heightened mercury retrogrades. <laughs> all right. All right. 
What else do we need to know this week? Focus on the deck. Ooh, we got Gate of Opportunities. Ooh, look how beautiful this card is. Isn't that pretty? So it says, Gate of Opportunities. Pass through the Gate of Opportunities, where in new paths, uh, where new, oh, where in new paths unfurl with boundless potential. Sorry, it's kind of dark in here. It's kind of hard to see. And they, it's like over the picture. So I wish they would have like put, put something dark behind it. Seize every minute. Embrace each moment with purpose. For time is a precious gift on your journey of self-discovery. Okay. That's what, you know, I put this in the, in the uh, collective the other day. It's like, you know, your life is very short. Your time is very limited. You might as well live it up. Go have all the experiences that you can have. Go, you know, explore. Go fall in love. Go, you know, have, get your heart broken. Whatever it is. Go experience life as this human being. And that way, by the end of your life, when you're on your deathbed, you don't have any regrets. You're like, you know what? I did everything I possibly could. And I'm happy with that. Right? Right? Because no, there's nothing worse than being on your deathbed and and thinking back going, my God, I didn't do anything that I wanted to. I didn't do anything that I set myself out to do because I let other people dictate my life. Can you imagine how shitty that's going to be? <sighs> I don't want to do that. So that's why I do what I do. And that's why I don't care. If other people don't like it, that is not my problem. That is their problem. <laughs> Remember I told y'all, um, I don't know if my mom's still on here, but, um, one of her friends t made sure she knew that she didn't like or agree with what I do. And my mom was telling me about it. And I was like, well, you can tell her that I really just don't give a shit. <laughs> like I don't care. That is not my problem. But she made sure to know or let us know that she didn't agree with it. Okay. Don't even know who she is. So I don't care. My best friend's wedding is this weekend. This will be an adventure. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Good luck to her. <laughs> Hopefully all contracts and whatnot were signed before today. But yeah, it's not the best, not the best time to get married. Okay, focus on the deck. Let's see what else we need to know this week. And then we'll get into the money deck. Find out what our money message is. Ooh, all right. What else do we need to know this week? What is our message? Ooh, snow leopard self-reliance. We've been talking about this. Okay, that's why I say this is up to you. This is your journey. You can't rely on anybody else to do things for you. You can have people teach you things and then you take off with it. Just like my mentor taught me tarot and metaphysics and all those things, I ran with it, ran with it. And now this is how my life is. I get to do this every day and it's freaking amazing. Okay, and that's exactly what I'm gonna teach you in the Quantum Master Academy. I'm gonna teach you everything that I was taught and more, okay? I'm bringing in teachers to teach you crystals and astrology, and then I'm gonna teach you Reiki as well. So then you run with it, and you become whatever it is that you want to become. Because like I said, this stuff is getting more and more mainstream because people are understanding the validity of it. Got it? Let me read this to you. You were strongly independent and often sol uh, solitary. Integrity is important for your best outcome, 100%. If you're not doing something with integrity, get out of here. <laughs> you know, karma is going to bite you in the ass so hard. All right? Choose, I'm sorry, cloak yourself with invisibility and walk with the shamans. Ooh, I like that. Creating your own safe space in the world and walking through alignment right? Use your intuition and let your life unfold in silent perfection. 
Yeah, I love this so much. Think of the snow leopard, right? They don't announce that they're there. They don't have to be the loudest person in the room. They're like, you know what? This is just what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. I'm in alignment. I'm using my instincts. And I use my energy to get me where I want to go. Right? So, yeah. That's cool. All right, all right. Let's see what our money message is for the week. And they're highly rare. Yeah. This uh, is the Spirit of the Animal. Yeah, Spirit of the Animals deck. If y'all want to screenshot that, I'll take my face out of it. It's on Amazon. I think I have it linked on my TikTok uh, shop thing. But you can find it on Amazon. So yeah, it's a great deck. Oh, you're very welcome. You just got into tarot? Oh, you're going to love it. Check out my self-paced tarot apprenticeship or um, the Quantum Master Academy, and I'll be happy to teach you. I love this deck too, Denise. I'm glad. you Aren't you the one that showed it to me? Or did I get it and we just happen to have the same one? I can't remember. We do that all the time. All my uh, people in the tribe and tarot classes, like we get all these decks and we show each other and then we all wind up buying... <laughs> The same ones. Yeah, the ladybug was awesome. I think we both had it. Okay, yeah, I can't remember. Okay, focus on the deck. Ask the deck, what is our money message this week? What is our money message this week? Oh, unexpected. Now, remember how this says, go with the flow of things are unexpected, right? So what does unexpected mean when it comes to your money? Do you immediately go to fear? Or do you go to, oh, okay, something really good could be coming in. Which one is yours? I have a big picture of the snow leopard in my lounge. It's my favorite picture. Oh, nice. Brought it here to Egypt. Ooh, that's cool. So are you, when you, when you think of unexpected, when it comes to money, I'll read this to you in a second. Do you think excitement or fear? Tell me. Something good could be coming in. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. First time to your life, but not your videos. Love your content. Thank you. A big lump sum. I like that, Marlo. <laughs> Excitement. Good. See, y'all are learning. Do I have a sixth sense? Everybody does. Excitement. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you. Because when you, when you go with the flow of unexpected, if you live in fear, what are you going to do? You're going to uh, predict or you're going to manifest something negative happening, right? But if you live in excitement and positivity and surrender, then you're going to experience something much better. So here it says, prepare for unexpected financial loss. Well, that's why I said on whatever day it was, Saturday, watch your spending, Okay, watch your spending because we have all these um, Black Friday deals, all that stuff happening. You need to be very aware of the websites that you're shopping from because there's a lot of scammer sites out there that are replicating sites that look legit from the places that you normally shop. So you need to make sure it says .com afterwards. If it says .shop or .anything else other than my website, my website's .guru, but if you're shopping from the places that you normally shop from, make sure it says .com, okay? Because they are sending out so many links and emails and all that stuff of repl replicated sites, and you're going to lose your money, okay? So that could be why this is showing up. Be very aware. Number two, the financial crisis may be out of your control, but you can still control the outcome, right? That's what I'm saying. Be aware 
of what you're clicking on. Be aware of what you're purchasing and, and be aware of your spending. Don't buy a bunch of shit just because you feel like you need to have things to, to give to people or you just want all these things because it's being thrown in your face all the time, right? Something that is useful. Number three, deal with the things head on and try to prepare for the unexpected before it happens. Again, be aware because we have Black Friday coming and so many people are looking to scam you. Okay, and it freaking sucks, man. It pisses me off so much. Scammers, I, they are the bane of my existence. I cannot stand those people because I don't understand what goes through their head. I don't want to understand what goes through their head, right? Because that means that I can be on the same level as them. But that is like the worst thing because I have so many people pretending to be me on social media and they are scamming, scamming the shit out of people. And I get messages saying, is this you? I'm like, no, it is not me. That's why I put on every one of my videos. I will never DM you for readings. I, I don't need to, okay? But people get scammed left and right on social media, on the internet, all of that. So please be aware of where you're shopping this weekend and make sure it says .com on the places that you normally shop. Don't click on links and emails. Go directly to the store's website. Okay, you'll be safer then. I decided kids are getting cash up. Hey, I'm sure they would be very happy with that. <laughs> Domingo, you go to hell for lying. He said, I don't like shopping. That's a freaking lie. This homeboy has more shoes than I do. <laughs> and they're sparkly, amazing shoes too. Uh, let's see, let's do this one. <laughs> I'll have to show you all the shoes that he got me not too long ago. They're amazing. We both have a thing for sparkly shoes because we're both musicians. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, focus on the deck. What else do we need to know this week? You know, I was doing the um, the tarot scopes for the the weeks that I'm not here, the two weeks that I'm not here. Oh, hang on, I gotta verify myself. So yeah, I was doing the tarot scopes for the weeks that I'm not here, so I can post them on YouTube, and um, it may it gave me a greater sense of gratitude for these live sessions. Like they're not as fun when y'all aren't here. <laughs> I really love getting to connect with y'all on Fridays and, and Mondays. So I just wanted to share that. You missed most of the reading. Yeah, but that's okay. You'll see it on YouTube. All right. What else do we need to know this week? Focus on the deck. Ooh, lightning. There we go. Unexpected events. Okay. Lightning can strike. Lightning, you know, is rare. Lightning sometimes is random, right? But we'll see what happens this week. So expect the unexpected because something amazing can be illuminated for you. Something amazing can happen. And if it's something that is what you feel is destructive, just understand that there's a need for that. Okay. Obviously not a need for like some horrific storm and somebody dies. Like, I'm not saying that. So please don't take that out of context. What I'm saying is there's some, if there's something in your life that seems to crumble, like the tower, that seems to need to come to an end, there is a reason. There is a method to everything. Okay? So there's a lot of unexpected energy happening here. And we have Mercury retrograde. So it's telling you expect the unexpected. And look, we have 44 there, just like the fairy blessing was 44. You needed that card? Okay. I love that there's a replay, but the energy isn't quite the same. I know. It's just, it really isn't. It really isn't. Like, I, I even said it, I think on both videos, I even was like, I miss y'all. <laughs> it's not as fun. What is the meeting time? I'm always missing it. It is 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. 
Mondays and Fridays, 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. <laughs> Fours are showing up a lot for you lately. Okay. Interesting. Got to do the work, Denise. <laughs> yes, I, yes, that's exactly why, Stephanie. She said it's because we all feel it, I think, the energy-wise, or energy, energy-wise. Yeah, yeah. You've seen sevens today. Nice. Oh, wow. That's crazy, Denise. Yeah, the fours are telling you something. Okay, focus on the deck. Let's see what else we need to know. What else do we need to know? Now we have 33. Time. Everything is in divine timing. What does that mean? Okay. I like to explain this in a different way as far as divine timing, because as we know, time as we use it is not linear, right? They've proven that with science and, and everything, right? Time is not linear. Time is a frequency. So think about music. Okay. Music is on a time signature. It's on a frequency. Okay, so we have the time signature of when the beat hits, right? But we also have a frequency of, of timing. That's how fast the, uh, the energy is vibrating, right? So divine timing is when you're in the same vibration as that thing that you want. You're syncing up in divine timing, okay? That's when you experience that thing. Does that make sense? Is that, is that easier to understand? Will I be live Friday? I will not be live on Friday. I will be live on Thursday morning, but that's for the tarot apprenticeship sale. So yeah, it's only one hour. That's your number. I know. Every time I see 33, I think of you, Jamie. <laughs> it's the second time you've heard divine timing today. Okay. Y'all like that explanation? Good. Okay, that's what divine timing is. It's like when you're in that right frequency, when you finally get in that flow, maybe some things have to happen in order to put you in that flow. That's, that's divine timing. So remember how I used to always explain to y'all sympathetic vibration? So you have something vibrating at this level here. And if you're vibrating like this, then you're going to like bounce off each other. It's not going to work. You're going to kind of like repel each other. Okay. But if you have something like this, and then all of a sudden you get on the same frequency, and you're both going like this, you attract one another. So this could be people vibrating at the same frequency and they attract one another, which is why you're like, I, I feel like I know you. I feel like, you know, we're just like vibing because you are. Does that mean it's a good thing? Not always, because sometimes you're vibrating at a very low frequency and your toxicity is meeting each other and you're like, I just, I just feel so, you know, connected to you. <laughs> like, oh fuck, yeah, <laughs> for not the best reason. But also, if you're up here in a high vibration, high frequency, right? You're vibrating together, and that's when it's a good relationship, okay? But also, it doesn't have to be another person. It could be an event, right? You're getting on that frequency with that event. You're attracting it to you. So I hope that makes sense. Two things on the same vibration will attract one another. That's why it's really important. Like if you're looking for love, if you're looking for opportunity, whatever it is, you got to get yourself on that vibration so it attracts right to you. That's why you don't have to go chase things. You attract them. That's the work. Make sense? Light bulb on. <laughs> um, let's see. Here. Hang on. Where did I put that? Maybe I don't use this one because I don't know where I put it. Oh, yeah, I do have it if I need it. Okay. Or maybe not. Nope. I think I put it down. We'll see. Oh, I forgot I brought these two decks over to use. Makes so much sense. Good, good, good.
<laughs> I will do that, Jamie. <laughs> More people need context on what that means and how it works. Okay, yeah, I can do that for sure. Okay, what else do we need to know? Focus on the deck. We have, ooh, number 11. Now we have master number 11, the council. That one's kind of hard to see on, on uh, TikTok. There you go. I did like the makeup users do. You see that? It's amazing. I'm, I'm obsessed. <laughs> it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy when people say, I'm obsessed with this. I'm so obsessed. I'm like, really? Are you? It's all, it's all you can think about? It's all you, you eat, sleep, and breathe this thing? Like you're that obsessed over it? I'm sorry, I'm logical and this stuff drives me nuts. Anyways, the council. So the council are like a group of advisors, you know, in this in this realm, in this world, in the universe. Okay. And number eleven is the the philosopher. Okay. So the number eleven is a master number indicating that there is this connection to the council. There is this connection to higher wisdom. So if you're seeing 11s a lot, it's telling you like, hey, you have this connection. What are you going to do with it? What are your thoughts? What are your emotions? What are you trying to manifest? Okay, you can get advice through that energy of 11. But you have to, what it's asking you to do is to open and expand the mind. Just like when I can't think of something, boom. It's like this energy. I don't know how to explain it. I just open the mind and I let everything go. And then it drops in, excuse me. Just like I was saying earlier about the the maid, uh, the maiden and the crone, or the maid, the mother, and the crone, whatever it is, I couldn't remember it. And all of a sudden, boom, it's dropped in my head. And I was like, oh, there it is. Because I just opened my mind and I was like, oh, okay. You have to give the universe space to put the information in. I hate when they say I'm having a panic attack. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. It's your birthday on the 11th. Oh, nice. It's a very high vibrational day, and it's a great, that's a great um, number to be born on. So, you know, having a birthday of 11 indicates that you have a very, like, personality-wise, people most likely come to you for advice. People tell you their, their life story. People come to you for advice and you, part of, part of like your personality has to master that 11. Like you're always wondering and seeking and asking like very kind of like inquisitive, but like wanting to know like the deeper meaning of things and that'll help you in life. So let me know if that, if that resonates. It's all new for you. Tarot was taboo in, in your culture. Oh, look, I live in the Bible Belt. It's still a little bit taboo down here. <laughs> Hi there. Yep, that's Denise's day. All right, what else do we need to know? Focus on the deck. Good. I'm so glad that you, you're learning more about it. Good. See, that... It helps you. It helps you to understand yourself. helps you to understand other people. And it's just, when you understand numerology, when you understand astrology and tarot and all these other things, then it helps you to understand yourself and then other people. And that makes life so much easier, you know? I'm not doing personal readings. I'm doing a collective reading. But if you need a personal reading, you can uh, book it through the link in my bio. Ooh, we got fangs. So it says, energy sucking, emotionally draining, shadow self, negative people or environment. So, I mean, you guys, this is the week where we spend a lot of time with family and some of those people we don't want to spend that time with, right? Sucks your soul. They're just negative. Maybe they're toxic, that kind of thing. And this is telling you the, the fairy blessing of the week is the blessing of, you know, a safe space in the world. So you are creating like this bubble of safety around you, okay? 
you were creating your own safe space by setting boundaries, by not engaging in negativity, by not letting anybody siphon off your energy, that kind of thing. And also understanding, like we talked about earlier, that people might be a little bit triggered because they're trying to travel. We have Mercury retrograde. They're going to get delayed. They're going to, they don't understand it. Um, Communication is going to be off. So if you understand all of these things, this negative energy won't affect you like it does them. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> what are some good books to read about astrology? Um, gosh, there's a, t oh man. I have one that I have saved, but I cannot remember what it's called. Maybe Jamie, if Jamie's still on, um, she can advise us on astrology because Jamie's going to be teaching the astrology class in uh, the Quantum Master Academy. Um, yeah, maybe she, if, if she's still on, she can advise on that. I love garlic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, what else do we need to know? I'm just going to pull from a bunch just because, you know, we're doing the whole week this uh, this week. So, and I'm going to miss y'all while I'm gone. But I will try, um, if I can, on the cruise ship, I will try to pop on live here and there. Most likely probably going to be TikTok. Um, so, make sure you're following me on TikTok as well. But I might just pop on just to like kind of check in. and uh, But I can't make any guarantees. That's why I don't have anything scheduled or whatnot. Um, but yeah. All right. What else do we need to know? And of course, I'm always in the tribe. Okay. So I, I'm always connected to the tribe. So if y'all have any questions or anything like that, I still have access there. All right. Oops. This one's upside down. The old one. The ancestors call, seek their wisdom, okay? And that's what the Hierophant here on Thursday is telling you. Like, if you seek this wisdom, that's why I said earlier, instead of asking for, like, a handout or somebody just to do something for you, if you ask for guidance and want to be taught how to do the thing, holy cow, now you've just unlocked another level, okay? So, also, when you open the mind and you let the answers come in, then you gain that wisdom. But if you have this mind where it's like you're trying to sort it out yourself, then it's not going to work, okay? You can even ask for this stuff to be done in your dream state. Like if you're, if you're experiencing a problem, if you feel stuck somehow, and you can't figure it out, ask your guides, ask your loved ones, ask whoever that you want to connect with in the, on the other side, to bring you the answers, to bring you the solution in your dream state and allow you to remember it when you wake up, okay? You can do that. If you need something healed, ask them to heal it while you're sleeping, okay? Um, let me see if there's anything else that's calling to me. Oh, these. I forgot I brought these. Thank you for the reminder. See, I just opened my mind and it reminded me. <laughs> if I can't find anything or anything, if I can't find something, I always ask, can you please help me find? And I state exactly what it is. And then I just leave my mind open and I'll be damned if I find it every time. Okay. Oh, I will get the rebel deck. That's for sure. <laughs> You're very welcome. Barnes & Noble has a series of books called In Focus. They have one on astrology. It gives the basics and it's easy to digest. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Also, Astrology, A Cosmic Science by Isabel Hickey is an incredible book too. <laughs> um, In Focus and then Astrology, A Cosmic Science by Isabel Hickey. So write those down. All right, what else do we need to know this week? I'll do this one and the other one, and then we'll get into the Rebel deck. All right, focus on the deck. Whoop, 
Okay. Ask it, what do we need to know for this week? And if you missed a lot of this, don't worry. I put this all on YouTube because we've covered a lot. <laughs> so, all right. Ooh, medicine wheel continuation. Look at that. Looks kind of like a fairy circle, but let me grab this book. Okay, let's see. What does this say? Uh, uh, places of power called medicine wheels are found in diverse forms and shapes across the globe. The oldest is in Majorville, Canada, and dates back 5,000 years. This medicine wheel tells of the first people emerging as spirits out of the underworld. More than 70 sacred hoops exist in North America alone, most of them in Alberta. Every medicine wheel is unique to its religious philosophy, beliefs, and teachings. Uh, other divinatory meanings, what goes around comes around. Ooh, karma. A situation will not resolve until you act to change the outcome. Mm -hmm. Just like we were talking about re revisiting, revising what has gone on this entire year and how do you want to redo that going into next year. A past issue needs to be readdressed. Okay, literally just said that. A wild goose chase. Mm. Remember how I said we don't chase things? We get on the sy sympathetic vibration and we attract them. Uh, as you learn from an experience, a new situation presents itself. Yeah, it's an ongoing evolutionary process. That's what life is. That's why you don't want to get stuck in one cycle. Okay, you are meant to grow and expand and have all these different experiences. But if you get yourself stuck on one cycle, one theme, then that creates misery. Right? Like that movie Groundhog Day. I tell you all, all the time I hate that movie because that would be a nightmare to have to relive the same day over and over again. Okay, I thought I was getting some sort of... Um, notification from TikTok, but no, it's, I don't know, some random stuff. Reminds me of the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. The Wheel of Fortune, yeah, it can get stuck. And the reason why it's stuck is because there's something within you that is unwilling to let it move. And everybody's like, well, I feel, you know, I feel stuck. I, feel, I don't feel like life is going and, you know, we're going the direction I want, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, what's going on in here? What are you resisting? What are you not seeing? And that's why we do tarot readings. That's why I do intuitive coaching. That's why I do all these things. Because you need that awareness of how am I blocking my own movement. Okay? And we'll, I'll teach you how to do that for yourself and other people in the Quantum Master Academy. Okay? We're going to start from like day one. So even if you're not in um, tarot apprenticeship, like for the first... 12 weeks because you've already taken tarot apprenticeship, you're still going to have stuff to do. So be ready. If you're in the Quantum Master Academy, be ready. We're going to start building your spiritual business from the, from the get-go. So if you're wanting to create this spiritual business, uh, we're going to start from day one, right? Yeah, like a cycle of fear or lack. Yep. Yep. I'm so excited. I've been wanting to learn Reiki and metaphysics for a while now. Woo! I'm excited too, you guys. I'm so freaking excited. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. All right. Focus on the deck. Ask it what else we need to know this week. And then we'll get into the rebel deck. What else do we need to know this week? Ooh, moving forward, it says, golly, it's so dark in here. The first step is taken within, oh, the first step is taken within our stillness. Look at that. And you see the, the hawk or maybe even an eagle there? The first step is taken within our stillness. We were talking about that, right? I said you don't have to chase things. <laughs> You have to go within, get in that vibration, and visualize it, be it, and attract it, okay? If you want to move forward, 
you have to learn how to be still. Be still and know, right? Those are instructions that we were given. Ask and you shall receive manifestation, okay? But you have to understand that you have to receive it. <laughs> Most people ask, ask and ask and ask, and they don't get into the energy or vibration of receiving. And they're like, well, it's not working. Well, because you're not in the energy of receptivity. You're in the energy of just giving, giving orders, giving orders, like asking, I want this, I want this, I want this. You have to be receptive, okay? Yes, yeah, stillness is power for sure and for sure. That's why whenever, um, well, a few weeks ago, I was telling y'all how to handle situations like set a boundary. Somebody's being toxic or somebody's talking to you crazy and you keep calm and you say, you know what? I don't, I don't like the way that you're speaking to me. Why don't you go ahead and take a break and then we can revisit this conversation when you're in a better state and you're not upset, right? You're calm. You're cool, collected. That's where your power lies because you're not letting that person call you out of your energy, right? You're setting a boundary and you're setting an expectation like, I don't like the way you're speaking to me. Why don't you go ahead and take a break? Meaning you need to leave my energy. If they don't leave, you leave, right? Okay. And then you say, we'll continue this conversation when, when the energy is better, when you're, when you have yourself collected. Watch what happens. <laughs> Snow leopard, shaman circle. This is all thread. Uh, while moving in the this period. Yeah. Yep. It's all like this energy helping you navigate. And it's saying, you know, you might experience some, like we had all these cards in reverse. So like you might experience some negativity and everything, but you have to understand that there is a, a, a higher way of seeing this. There's a higher way of navigating through this. There is protection. There is guidance always. And if you tap into it, then that's where you're in your power. Okay. You see an eagle flying over you. Wow. Love it. And that's, what hap that's what's happening here in this card. The eagle is flying over this person. Love it. All right, what else? And just like, oh, I just got goosebumps. You know how they say whenever, uh, like let's say you're hiking somewhere and you get lost. What, are they, what is the first thing they tell you to do? Sit still. Don't move. Why? Because they have to find you. They can't find you if you're always moving. <laughs> you're gonna be going like this all the time, right? That's the first thing that you're told if you get lost, be still and let it find you, okay? All right, this is the Rebel deck. If you get offended easily, this is the time to scroll away. This Rebel deck will call you out and in colorful language, and it's freaking funny. <laughs> so focus on the deck. Ask it what we need to know this week. What is our final message for this week? What is our final message for this week? Okay. <laughs> Step away from the crazy making diet for a hot second. <laughs> Kale and spirulina taste like ass. <laughs> Eat some yummy shit. Bacon, chocolate, beer. Get some. <laughs> I'm telling you, the cards know. Like, we have never ever pulled this card but how fitting for thanksgiving week right give yourself a freaking break eat the cake you know <laughs> i'll read this again step away from the crazy making diet for a hot second kale and spirulina taste like ass eat some yummy shit bacon chocolate beer get some and of course it's all in moderation right don't be ridiculous <laughs> but don't don't deprive yourself of things Okay, so that's pretty funny. Oh, look here. Ask a fucking expert. This was part of the reading with the other cards. 
It says, don't rely on your friends or the internet. Listen to a damn professional. I approve this message 100%. Okay. I have people in my uh, comments section that try to uh, argue or, you know, spread toxic energy. Hang on, Stephanie. I'm sorry. I hid your comment. <laughs> Spirulina tastes like sea algae dirt. <laughs> Um, but anyways, I have people that, you know, jump in my comments. They love to talk. They're toxic nonsense. They're lazy way of doing things. They're like, you don't have to do it that way. And I'm like, okay, grow up, get some, you know, education, and then we'll have a conversation, right? So it's like when you're trying to do something, when you're trying to learn something, talk to a professional. Don't talk to somebody that's going to be like, well, you just figured out on your own, you know, and you can do whatever you want. And, and then you start going through uh, hard times. You're like, well, I mean, you didn't do it right. And fuck that. No, I will teach you the way to do things. Am I the know-all end-all? No. But I will teach you what works. And I will teach you the tools that you need. You run with it. Okay? So, yeah. And I have other ladies. I'm not teaching you everything in the Quantum Master Academy. I don't want to and I can't. So I'm bringing other amazing ladies like Jamie and Denise in to teach you other students about other stuff. So yeah, I love your style. Very Saturn-like influence. You know why? Because um, <laughs> Capricorn is my midheaven. That's the way I operate. And Saturn is in um, my sixth house. So, yeah, spot on. <laughs> yep. Oh, thank you so much, Carrie. I appreciate it. She gave me a compliment on my hair. Thank you. Makes sense. <laughs> yep, spot on. It's the thing. It's like I'm one of those people that I will, I will, um, Hold the fire under your ass because I know that you are capable of doing these things. I, when I was in school, um, I, I got into cheerleading because my sister got into cheerleading and I was like, okay, fine, I'll try it, whatever. And my first year in, in uh, my freshman year, I was voted captain of the cheer squad and I didn't hurt, I like, I barely knew anybody on the cheerleading team, but we had spent the summer together. And they got to know me and they automatically nominated me for head cheerleader. I had no idea. Like, I didn't even know I was like a nominee. And um, then I was continually voted the entire high school career to be head cheerleader. Well, my junior year, I had to be co because seniors got to be head cheerleader. But it's because I was like, let's do this. We can do this. You know, let's go. I'm the one that's going to cheer you on and show you exactly how to do things. And I will call you out, not in a negative way, but I will call you out and say, hey, you're much more capable than you're allowing yourself to be. You can do this. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this. So, yeah, it's in my nature. <laughs> I love teaching. I was not a straight-A student. I hated school. Hated school. But I love learning. Like, as I grew up and as, a, as an adult, I love learning. It's like, I, I love learning, but I don't want to be judged on how much I can retain the information because that closes my mind off and <clears throat> because I am at Aries rising. So, um, no, I absolutely love learning and then turning around and showing somebody else like breaking it down. I have a very good ability to break things down into easy to digest systems. It's in my astrology and I'm also a life path one. So I have, I have all of this, but yeah, I hated school. Was not the best at it, but I absolutely love learning. So I have so, like, all these books. I have so many more on my iPad, audiobooks, everything. It's like, I want to know all the things because I want to understand it. And then I can break it down for you to easily understand. Yeah. All right. Bye, Jamie. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. <laughs> Denise. <laughs> she said, yeah, she calls me out all the time. And thankful. I sure will. You love learning too? Yeah. Yep. It's just 
my it's my favorite. Like even this morning, I was listening to an audiobook as I was getting ready for this live. Like I'm always learning something because it fascinates me. I want to understand and I like to look at different perspectives to and I'm also a, a self-projected projector in uh human design. So I'm meant to teach. I'm meant to lead. I'm meant to be able to absorb all this information like a sponge because most of my energy centers are open. And so except for these three. Um so I, I absorb information. I absorb other people's energy. Like I'm legit an empath, which is why I was like bawling my ass off when my friends had to put their dog down. Um, but yeah, I'm just a sponge. Like I remember random stuff. And when, when you ask me about something, it activates it back here. I always say I like this Rolodex. I'm like, ding, here you go. Have you tried this? <laughs> or did you know this? I, I, it's interesting. So yeah. Anyways, thank you so much, Tracy. I hope you all have an amazing week. I hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving if you celebrate. Um, again, I will be gone for the next two weeks, but I am showing the, or I do have the, the videos for you on YouTube for uh, next week and the week following. I will check in, obviously. I'm always in the tribe. Um, if you need anything, you can email me and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I will try to jump on alive here and there throughout the cruise. I don't know how the uh, internet's going to be, but I will also be on live on Thursday, this Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, because I'm doing that 50% off sale for the Tarot Apprenticeship self-paced module. It's only for one hour. If you can't get on the live, write this down. The coupon code is TURKEY. Okay, all caps, TURKEY. You could get 50% off between the hours of 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. It's only one hour because I'm not discounting it this much again. Right? So I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you Thursday morning. Mwah. Love you. Come on, Instagram.